Hello, welcome back to Space Engineers. In today's video, we're looking at another land vehicle that's once again a mech, but this one is very impressive because it doesn't use any thrusters to boost it around, it's purely done on leg power, and it doesn't even use scripts to control it. It's all done in time blocks, she just stomps around, and then I'm just going to show you it straight off the bat. So my character hopping in the seat, here we go, pressing number one, and off go the legs. So yes, this thing can go around at quite slow speeds, and it's surprisingly versatile what it can get up and what it can get down on. But of course it does have some problems with rocky terrains as it will damage the bottom of the vehicle because it's very low to the ground. So as you can see on the front of the screen, we've got our hinges moving up and down, so I have to trudge along the ground. Looking across the there, there's our middle legs just spinning front to back. That's the same on the opposite side, and of course down to there we're moving at about 4 meters per second, although it's varying between 1 and 5. Here we come to the third pass of view, here we go, we've got lovely glass panels at the back there, which I do absolutely love, look at that. We just have a very decorative rotor in there that spins backwards and forwards, doesn't add anything to the overall vehicle, it's purely there for some decoration, and of course it just adds a bit of life to the back of the vehicle. Anyway, come to a stop, here we go, before we crash into that tree. I could bring free camera all the way over. Wherever it's gone, it's somewhere in the distance. But yes, this mech is called the Spider Hexapod Mech. Hopefully I said that correctly. I've been struggling to say that word. But it's just a fantastic little mech. Play around in Savar mode. But due to the fact it does use subgrids, you will need to spawn it in directly. Because of course the projector will not be able to fully build it. And here we are back over at the Spider Mech. Bring the sunlight back around before we go through the F10 menu. Well, we're going to have a look through that. Then we're going to have a look around the outside as per usual. Then we're just going to drive around for a bit and see what it can do. It does come equipped with a gun, as you can see on the top there, and that's been fully rotated up so we can spin it around and precisely shoot your targets. And of course, it does have a car container on the bank there because there is no mass container system, so we'll have to hop out, load that up with a bit of ammunition, and use it quite sparingly. Anyway, with that, putting the camera up like so, pressing F10, putting it in the spawn menu, the Hexapod Mech is 351 small blocks using four DLC packs. We've got the Automatoms, we've got the Wasteland, Spies of the Future, and Warfare 2. We see up to the top there, there was the creator's first attempt at making a mech like this, and it was a challenge. And I can see that it really did pay off, because it is exceptionally impressive, due to the fact it doesn't use thrusters, which is a very common thing that mechs use to actually make it go uphill, or just walk around in general. Anyway, down to here, we've got, of course, our controls. We've got number one, number two, to make it walk and stop. Turn left and right, number 4 is to actually activate the turn left and right on number 3, then of course we've got our turret controls, and that's about it. So we're going to give this thing a thumbs up, which I already have, come around towards the very front here, and we'll do like I said. So for the very front, the spider, hexapod mech, this is what we get, and it's a bunch of orange and dark grey steel blocks to make up the main body, and of course the entire vehicle. We can also see two red spies, one on the side of the galley gun, one on the front vehicle to light up the darkness, and then just below here we've got ourselves a lone gyroscope, help me with this thing around. Up and above where I'm sitting, we've got ourselves our saddle cockpit, we'll get a better look at that when we look down at it. Then moving across over here, all of our legs have been set up basically the same, we've got ourselves a rotor sitting behind some armed panels right at the very base of the vehicle, but the saddle cockpit is currently sitting on top of, so there we go, we just about make out the back of where it's been placed down. But there's our rotor, comes onto a hinge, onto a steel block, onto another hinge in this lovely dusty brown colour. That comes across to some more seal blocks, down to a wheel suspension, onto a small wheel, which is what can be used to, well, plonk this thing around. And of course this hinge up here has been partially covered up by some armed panels, which you've got a bit of protection from any kind of stray shots coming towards you. But of course, if you are using this in combat, it will be a bit of a sitting duck, because it has lots of points of where it can be fully disabled. Pulling away from the leg, there it is from a distance, looking down at it, there we go, we'll get a better look at that a bit later on. Anyway, down to here, here we come, all the way around onto the side, there we are, there's a fantastic view of both of our legs, so the middle one that moves forwards and backwards, and of course our front ones that just move up and down. Once again following the same pattern of a rotor onto a hinge, but this one here has been only partially covered up by an armoured panel, can't actually fit in this little section right here, due to the way it has been set up. Then around towards the back there, there's our rear leg, then over to here, as we saw when we were actually walking this thing around, here's some glass windows where we can peer inside, our time blocks, our custom weapon controller for the turret on top, and then two rotors, purely there for some decoration, that'll wobble backwards and forwards when we actually move this thing around. Purely there for decoration, like I said, but still, it's a very nice thing and a nice decorative touch that I haven't seen on any other vehicle. Yes, looking over onto the side, there's our time blocks, looking all the way up, not too much to talk about there. Then above our windows, where they've got neon tubes coming all the way across, a couple of merge blocks so we can disconnect the turret if we do not want to have this on top, or say we're trying to walk through an area that's quite low, where the turret's making it so the vehicle can't fit through. Yes, there is control to actually control that, which I suppose we'll do at the very end. Round towards the very back of the thing, where they've got an air vent, just break up all these steel blocks at the back, 
the event currently does nothing, it is purely there for decoration. Then all the way up to here, here's your car container for the ammunition for the gun, partially covered up once again with some armoured panels. Around onto the side there, we've got an orange one around the middle which is break up all the grey. Then towards the front there, there's our top mounted camera, there's our auto cannon, and there's our light on the side. If we look all the way down, there we are, that's where I'm sitting in the seat. And we've got some batteries right below there to give it a nice long power, so we can drive this for a nice long time. And then there we are from a distance, just looking down at it. Moving down underneath the sink, here we go. So there's a very clear view of our gyroscope and the front. And then not too much else to talk about. But one thing there is, is, is some piston heads, which is where our rotors for our legs are currently sitting on top of. This acts as both a platform to attach them onto the vehicle, as well as giving them a little bit of extra protection from any kind of very minor bumps that won't actually destroy the blog, but is enough to damage it. Just adds that little bit of protection because once you start losing legs, especially the legs in the middle, it is going to slow down considerably and have a lot of problems when turning around or even just manoeuvring in general. But as for that, that's pretty much it for the outside of this meg. So what we're going to do now is have to go through the controls, drive her around, and I think that'll be that. So with my character into here, bring up the hut, we've of course got our number one, number two to make this move and make this stop. We won't do that just yet. For number three, number four, once again, we're not going to be doing this just yet, but that's going to be to turn it left and right, and of course to activate the turn or make it go in a straight line. Number five, number six, if you're turret on top, the turret is AI enabled, where we turn it on and off as we please with number six. For manual control, we press number five, and there we are, we now move this up and down and spin it all the way around. It's a very handy thing to have if you want to precisely shoot a target the AI is struggling to handle. Already coming out of that, pressing number 9, that's giving your turret on top. So pressing that, that's now fully disconnected. So we're to move forwards, we've now jettisoned the turret on top and left it behind. But yes, of course, I pressed number 1 to make it move forwards, and it is going to move roughly in a straight line. It's not too reliable in the way that it moves forwards, but still perfectly fine for playing around with. And well, because we lost the turret on top there, we can see a very clear view at the back there, with those little rotors just wiggling backwards and forwards. First part of view, this is what it looks like. So there's our legs just trudging forwards on the side there. There we go, it goes forwards to backwards. Press number two, we come to a stop. It's a very sudden stop, which I can see taking a bit of damage here and there in the long run, but through my testing, it hasn't been too much of an issue. Anyway, starting up once again, pressing number four, this is going to activate our turning system where we're now going to turn left or right, depending on how many times we press number 3. So as it stands right now, we're turning to our right, but once we press number 3, this is now going to turn to its left, so this is how we're going to maneuver it around, because we can't use our mouse, we can't use the keyboard, to actually make this properly turn. So once we're happy with our direction, we press number 4, and now we'll start to move in a straight line. There will be a bit of fiddling to actually make it go in the direction we wanted to go, but once you get used to the controls, it's again, not too bad. But as for that, that's pretty much it for all the thing has to offer. It's just a fantastic little make which narrowly avoided that tree. But still, it's a lot of fun to play around with. It's a lot of fun that you could have in Savar mode, but once again, you would have to spawn this in to the fact that you use the subgrids. Best, I suppose we get a few more little views around this. So, hiding the HUD there, there's how our legs have been moving around and trying to get the camera not to wobble around. There we go, that's absolutely fantastic. So, we can clearly see our middle legs and how they're walking around. And of course, the back legs, it does look quite surreal looking at it like this. It looks very odd without actually having the whole camera wobble around, having the engineer wobble around, just having it all perfectly stable. It's very odd. Back into first person view, here we go, just looking around there. And of course, we're going to start turning this thing around. So looking at our legs, there we go, we're now going to turn to the right. And there we are, not too much actually changes the visuals of the legs. Let's press number four again, go in a straight line. But yes, as for that, that's all there is to the Spizer Hexbot make. I suppose the only thing really left to do is to send this off a cliff to see how it handles. So bring this to a stop, find the free camera, and finding a suitable location, this poor little turret be left all by itself, and it will be forgotten in this world like many other wreckages that I've showcased on the channel. But yes, looking around here for a suitable cliff to drive this thing off to actually test it, I think that one in the distance would do quite nicely. So here we are, over here, dropping the camera all the way down, there we are, I will put it close to the edge, and now putting the spider mech all the way down, there we are. Now pressing number one, off we go, pressing number four, we want to turn this to the left. Here we come all the way around. And about we're gonna turn that off. Hope we make it all the way through the trees. Yes, we can. Now here we go once again. There is a very lumpy surface. We're gonna start taking a bit of the damage here and there. This thing, like I said, does not handle the lumpiness too well. It's only really inclines up and down, and even really steep inclines that this thing can handle. Here we go, it's doing an absolute bang up job. But there we go, there goes the cockpit. But it is still sort of wandering around. That looks like it was it. That looks like that tiny little bump. In fact, I'm not even too sure what actually damaged itself on. It might be in this lip right here. 
Because there we are, that is that for the end of the vehicle. In fact, that was not satisfying enough, so instead I'm going to spawn in a brand new one and set it off this cliff, making sure it can actually go all the way across it. So here we go one more time, make sure it's actually aiming in the correct direction. There we are, get it back inside. And pressing the one, off we go once again. So this is what I was actually intending to do with Meg, send it off a sheer cliff. But it looks like we have stopped Sunny. It looks like we have damaged the time block to the handling the legs. And actually bring the free camera all the way over, actually looking at the damage that was dealt. All the way down. And I'm not actually too sure what has happened here. Because of the smoke coming out of the back there, there's the damage time block. But I'm not actually seeing what's actually been damaged or how it's been properly disabled. It's a very odd thing. Anyway, I suppose what I can do now is just go and drop it like this. Here we go, just gonna flop it down. And this will be it for the end of the video. This is what I was actually trying to do, making it walk off the edge. This will have to do. But anyway, as I was saying, it's a fantastic little mech to use in your world. Absolute glorious has all been set up and doesn't use thrusters or strips. And is surprisingly durable when you're throwing it off a cliff. So be linked to it description below if you do wish to download and play around yourself. Highly recommend you do. And I'll be back with another video sometime soon. Bye bye.